Hi, I'm Jeff Hajek, the owner and founder of Relaxion. This video is part of my lean training system. It was originally released as a DVD a long time ago, but times have changed and the look of some of these LTS videos is now a bit dated. The content is still spot on though. So rather than just discontinue the line, I am posting the majority of each of the 36 videos here with the remainder available at Velaction Videos. That's our video service where you can download a wealth of supporting content and watch subscriber only videos. I recommend subscribing and hitting the notification button if you want to make sure you don't miss any new content. I would also really appreciate if you would hit the like button if this video is helpful and you want to see more content similar to it. The like button helps us get found on YouTube, but it also lets us figure out where you want us to put our future effort. Now enjoy the free version of this video. Hello, my name is Jeff Hajek. I'm the owner and founder of Action Continuous Improvement and the author of What Do You Mean I Gotta Be Lean? Um, today I'll be talking about flowcharts, and this class comes from my lean training system. What I like to do is just let you know that in this lean webinar, what you're going to find is that some of the transitions coming across the screen are going to be a little jumpy. It doesn't happen in the PowerPoint package. Um, this is only because of some latency issues with the, uh, the actual transmission of the webinar over the internet. And you also, I'd like to remind you that this is copyright material, so please don't distribute it or record it. Now I'll move on to the, the flowcharts. And what we'll be talking about today is really trying to understand how you can create a flowchart. Now it's a pretty common tool, most people are familiar with them, but just, just a couple things to keep in mind as you're, as you're building them out. The second thing is how to actually use a flowchart to improve a process. And there's a couple key points that uh, many people aren't familiar with that can really elevate your, your improvement efforts to the next level by knowing a few little tricks. So let's start out by saying what a flowchart is. Um, basically, it's just a way of taking a sequence of operations and putting them into a very graphical representation. So think about when you go to a fast food place and you order something to eat. You know, you go up to the register, the customer takes the order, and then there's a question, would you like fries with that? And that is, is a way of starting to branch off in this flowchart. And you, as you start looking at it, you realize some things jump out at you here that wouldn't in a, in a paragraph or a step-by-step -step format. And it's really about the, the complexity and then the different ways that the work flows. So you can see that there's different paths that the work goes to get down to the point from custom approaching register until the order is all complete. So this is, um, it, it becomes something that you can use during the cycle of improvement. So just the, fit, the simple act of creating this flow chart forces you to have a lot of communication between the person doing the work and the person who's analyzing the work. And the questions and all the different um, observations that come up during this whole process of talking about the process, um, that really drives a level of understanding and it makes people question why they do things the way they do. And this starts a cycle. And the first thing that happens is once you write it down, you've created a level of standardization. And it may not be um, a real extreme, um, rigid type of standardization, but it's a first step to going on that path to getting something where the, the work is done the same way every single time. And that'll provide a great foundation for improvement over the long haul. Once you lock things in, have everybody doing the process the same way, and you can predict the results every time, you start getting this foundation for building um, lasting success and lasting improvement in quality and, and speeding up your processes. So that standardization is a big part of it. The other thing that helps out is as you get these processes standardized, you start realizing where are good places to check and to observe. And you'll find that in the improvement cycle, you want to know how you're doing. And you have to know where to measure to really understand how you're doing. So these measurement points become very obvious. And traditional, or typically they're going to be located at decision points. So every time you have a decision point, there's often, um, it's related to some external factor and knowing what those numbers are, how often things go on different paths, for example, it'll give you a great opportunity to focus your improvement efforts on the areas where they're going to get the biggest bang for the buck. The second thing that happens is the complexity in the flow chart often links to waste. So the more complex it looks in your flow chart, what you'll find is that there's often a lot of wasteful practices that you have in, in the real process that the, the flowcharts representing. So you can get a lot of understanding of how waste comes out with um, the visual representation. And of course, once you have this identification of waste and a good points to measure and standardization, 
you now have this basis for improvement. So having all this stuff locked in and being able to look at it and see things that jump off the page at you provides this opportunity to go make things better, which of course triggers more communication and follow-up flowcharts as you make changes to your process. It becomes a big cycle of, of looking, analyzing, identifying places to measure, and eventually starting all over again. So that's how flowcharts fit into this whole improvement process. I hope you are getting something valuable out of this video. If you want to get more out of this program, we recommend watching it on Velaction videos. You'll be able to watch the entire video, mostly ad-free, and view subscriber-only programs. You'll also have access to a load of continuous improvement downloads. And what, what do they do for you? Well, as you start thinking about the communication, a big part of that, like I already mentioned, is, is just the fact that you open up the talks. What also happens is you have people often, especially in administrative processes, that do multiple, or multiple people are doing the same job, but everybody does things a little bit differently. And when you start documenting it, writing it down, having everybody look at it, people start sharing their best practices. So if you have 10 people all doing a similar function, say on an, an accounting team or in a marketing group or even like an order entry team, they're all going to have slightly different ways of doing things, how they store information on their computer, or how, um, maybe little tricks on how they do cut and paste off of documents or, or hotkeys or things like that. And all these best practices start coming out as you start documenting. So that's, that's a big part of the benefit, just to get people talking and sharing. The second one is a standardization is, is really great to have a flowchart for a nonlinear process because it's much easier to watch. So instead of trying to figure out where things branch off in, in a series of paragraphs, it jumps off the page at you. And it's, it's like we keep saying that over and over about the flowchart. Things jump off the page at you. And the measurement points, um, all these decision points are good measurement points because it shows that one of two things are happening. And often those two things, one is better or more desirable than the other. And what you want to do is you generally want to shift the flow down one of the two paths. And, and you, when you find out what those, uh, those numbers are, it makes it easier to take action and you can understand what the bang for the buck is if you do have to spend time or resources or energy to go down, you know, to, to alter the way your work is flowing. The waste identif identification, there's a big thing called a hidden factory or a hidden process. And these things jump out when you do a flowchart. Now, a hidden process is basically something that's done but isn't documented. And what you'll find is as you go through and observe processes more and more and your improvement efforts, people will say, well, if this happens, I do it this way. And you ask where that's recorded, and they say, well, we just do it that way. We don't have it written down anywhere. It's just we've, we've started doing it over time. And all these hidden processes generally aren't included in any type of capacity planning. So if you have all these hidden processes that are in your, you know, buried in your, in your system, what you, find, what you find is that there's a lot more work than you think there is if you're a manager. And, and then when you try to staff accordingly, you're not going to be staffing properly, and you're always going to be behind the power curve. And, and people are going to start making mistakes because they're trying to work too hard to catch up. And, of course, anytime you document something and lock it in, you provide a stable platform for making gains off of. And, and once you see, you know, how things flow or uh, what changes could be made to improve things, your path becomes much more obvious. So just having the flowchart available to look at is going to make your improvement efforts much more effective. As part of the Lean training system this video comes from, we offer a variety of Lean LEGO training packages. These include our Lean LEGO flow simulation, mistake-proofing or pokey oak Lean Lego exercise, and our visual controls and 5S Lean Lego exercise. We've also got an office flow simulation for those not implementing continuous improvement on the shop floor. Click the links in the description below or click on cards that pop up on this video to learn more. We'll also add links at the end. So to actually make the chart, it's pretty simple. You watch the process, you make a draft of it, and then you refine it and add detail as you discuss it with people. It's a simple three-step process. And, and the flowcharts really aren't all that complicated um, to, to make them. It just sometimes it takes a lot of effort to record all the steps. And of course, the more, um, the more complicated the process, the more expansive your flowchart's going to be. And sometimes you get a little bit, um, you know, if, if you have too much on one page, it can be a little cluttered. And you, gotta, you have to find that 
level of detail and, and you know how dense you can pack information on a single page. But all this stuff, it's no matter how many steps you have, it's still the same basic principles. And I'm going to keep refining. You know, I keep talking to people about this. Is this whole idea of of lean or continuous improvement? It's the fact that you're never done and things are never really established. And the same thing happens when you make a flowchart. Your first flowchart is not going to be perfect. It's going to be better than having no flowchart, but eventually what you're going to do is you have to keep refining it to find more accuracy. And one of the biggest issues with a flowchart is, is often decisions that you don't know about until you see that abnormal condition or that maybe, maybe we should say the uh, less seldom condition. So it could be a gold customer. When they, when they order something, there's a different process you follow, and maybe it's only a couple times a day. But it's a, st it's a standard process. It's just uncommon. And what that'll do is you have to watch it a few times, and once you find it, then you can add that level of detail, and then your, uh, your flowchart becomes more accurate over time. So what's on the flowchart? Well, there's a couple of little icons that you'll see. And the first one is this rounded corner shape, and it stretches out to your size. And this is called a terminator. You have a process box, you have a decision point, you have a flow line, and then there's a connector. And the connector is basically an off-page connector or a different location. And what it does is just a way of conserving space and, and keeping the clutter down. So um, you just link these two things together. So how do they look? Well, the start terminator is basically the way of saying here's where the process begins. And the point on a page should be easy to recognize, but also in real life. It should be something that's very clearly the beginning of a process. And this is often the fax machine buzzes or the fax is received or the email is received or the customer walks in the door. So there's some finite, easily identifiable action that's your, your trigger to start your flowchart. The process box should be a noun and a verb. It should be very clear about what it is. And it's really not supposed to be all the technical details of how to do that step. It's just what is being done. And because of the space constraint you have on a flowchart, you're, you're going to have something like tight and bolt. You're not going to have use 9 16 inch wrench and the air ratchet and um, tighten. You know, it, you're not going to have all the different step-by-step -step items there. What you're going to have is, you know, install bolt. And, and that would be written, you know, more clear work instructions would go with that. So don't feel like you have to put every single level piece of detail into your flowchart. It's really a be, to be able to look at it and see how the work is moving through the process, you know, how, how, how everything is, you know, obviously flowing. And you can see the, the transitions rather than the actual pieces of work or the specific mechanics of what they're doing. Now the flow line, often forgotten, put an error on the end of your flow line and it shows which direction. Um, if you start from the beginning and follow it through, it's really easy to see, but often people will jump into the middle of a flowchart and sometimes as, as things get a little bit convoluted in the middle of a flowchart, it can be a little difficult to see which, box, which line is coming into a decision box and which of the two are coming out. Sometimes it's a little easier when you actually have those flow lines that have an arrow on them. The uh, decision point is a diamond. Um, just a little note, as you see the decision point, sometimes it's a little hard to fit things in especially on the computer, so be a, a little bit uh, concise in how you write out the decision. Um, and it's just, it's just for some reason, you know, when you, when you have the decision blocks on either Visio or PowerPoint or Excel, the, the most common ways you'll, you'll do a computer-generated flowchart, it's just um, because of the shape of the, the text box, it's a little difficult to get in there. So you're going to be a little uh, flexible in how you draw it. It might have to be a little stretched, a little flatter, not a pure diamond. Um, but anyway, so this, this shows where you have a decision, and by decision, it's either internal, where you choose one way or the other, or an external, where something happens. An external could be, you know, if you're an ice cream vendor on a beach, and you check the weather in the morning, and if it's over a certain temperature, you might leave a little earlier than you normally would, because it'll be better sales in the morning. And that would be a decision point on your startup flowchart. But it would be something that you would control it would be an external factor that you're looking at. A connector helps you prevent confusion. It helps keep your chart from getting cluttered. And it's often used when you have a sub-process. When you have that decision block, uh, say you have to go for a credit check, or say you run out of an item and you have to go and reorder something. Um, those would be sub-processes that you might do off-page connectors for. And then the end terminator shows when a cycle is complete. 
And often because of the branching, you may have more than one end terminator. You may have um, one spot where a customer is um, handled and satisfied and another one where the process ends with the customer being referred to a different um, part of the organization or you know, something else might happen that doesn't link into the same, um, it's just a different outcome. This video comes from Volaction's Lean Training System, which takes a module-based approach to learning about continuous improvement. Modules include a PowerPoint presentation and student guides for every video, plus there are many exercises and quizzes as well. There's also a whole host of supporting content in the form of terms in our Continuous Improvement Companion and downloadable articles. Our modules are currently available in our store and as downloads at Volaction Videos. Click the links in the description below or click on the cards that pop up on this video to learn more. We'll also add links at the end. So let's just take a look at an example. Of this. Let's say we're, I'm asking you to, to, if you were in a class right now, I would ask you to get, actually have a student stand up and do this. I would say you have an order to write the letter J on the blackboard or on the whiteboard. So they would walk over to the board, they would go to find the pen, and if the pen was present or it was not present, they'd have to go through, like I said, that subprocess of acquiring the pen. And if it was present, they would write the letter, and then the customer myself would be satisfied. And as you can see, there's a lot of opportunities here to have further work instructions. So when I say write the letter, you know, there's nothing there to indicate the size or the color requirements or the type of script, whether it's cursive or, or handwritten or block letters or, you know, there's no real specific instructions there. So that would be done on an off-page piece, but you can still see the flow and you can see how people move around. And you can see a good opportunity to actually track data. How often does a person get to the board and not have a pen present and then is there something we can do to improve that, to, to reduce that as a problem so we can get that decision block out of there. If we're 100 percent, we don't need the decision block anymore. And that's how you start using this to refine processes. So that's a great opportunity for improvement here. So using a flowchart, there's a couple different ways you'll use it. And one is this is, is a simple reminder in your daily use. So you might have this that you have a little, uh, a little flip book and when you do a particular process, the flowchart shows you what to do. And I use things like this for when I'm doing my posting. You know, as, I, as, you, as you think about um, you know, Volaction Continuous Improvement's business model, I do daily blogs and I do lean terms for my online dictionary and I create a lot of content. So each different thing I do has a different general flow to it. So you can use flowcharts to show how you do specific work if you have a lot of stuff going on. You can also use it for training, and these are much more detailed than your daily use reminder flowcharts. And, and these are going to have enough to cover the basic processes. Generally, these aren't going to be into the real detailed ones because, or, you know, the real complicated processes because the trainees often aren't doing those. That's normally stuff that would be for more advanced people. So training uh, flowcharts are generally used for the basic processes, but in high detail to get new employees um, up to speed quickly or to help them with their training. Then you have your documentation, and these are the highest level ones, but they're not really used that often in day-to-day -day operations because it's just a way of storing the information and having something to refer to. Now the problem with this type of documentation is that it typically falls out of date fairly quickly as processes are improved. And for some reason, updating documentation is, is one of the things that many companies are, are fairly poor at. And you know, getting the documentation current can be a challenge, especially when you don't have a lot of uh, spare resources. And then there's process improvement. And this is where you get the very fine level of detail. And because you have a team that's focused on it and you're doing, you know, if this is for Kaizen, you're going to have a lot of people who are, are highly involved in, in, in the process, so you can put a lot more detail into it. And you're also going to see several iterations of this in the course of a week-long event because you're making improvements to things and constantly refining it and changing the, the direction, the path, and um, taking out some of these little sub-processes that you might find as you make improvements. So all of this adds a level of detail, and then eventually that high level of detail will be distilled down to create documentation going forward. There's also an advanced version of a flowchart, and it's called Swim Lanes, and not surprisingly, what it has is several different um, basic categories where time goes across on the right. So as, as you go to the right, you're kind of going deeper into the process. So look at something here where you might have 
an order come in to the order entry team, and and they're obviously going to work with some other people. So perhaps they work with with um, you know they, they they decide whether it's a new customer, and if it's not, they'll enter the order. But if it is, that's where they have to work with these other people, and they'll send it over to the AR, the accounting team, to do a credit check. And you notice here, complete is the verb, credit check is the noun. Obviously, you know it's a it's a compound noun. I guess that's the term, but you know it's got that complete the credit check. It's got something in action. It's very clearly identifiable. They finish it up. In the Thanks for watching this extended free version of our Lean Training System module video. If you want to watch the whole video, check it out at Velaction Videos. If you want to make sure you don't miss the next LTS video that we post, please be sure to subscribe down below. We also always appreciate likes as it helps us get viewed more and makes us keep adding additional content. Thanks for watching and best wishes on your continuous improvement journey.